Yeah, it's worth looking at his claims that it's absent from early witnesses that represent all text types. I want to reinforce that his claim in, in this commentary note is that homeo taluton, okay, again, that's two readings, similar endings. We'll take a look at an example later. Explains this textual variant beautifully. I mean, it fits like a glove. But in this instance, Bruce is saying, um, Dr. Metzger, <laughs> Bruce Metzger, um, he's saying that the evidence that uh, in the early centuries or the early extant witnesses that we have uh, of all the text types, they all don't contain it. In fact, he finds that so strong that he's, he's, He's weighing that more in his decision than homeoteleuton. Um, and, and I know that people are going to be asking what homeoteleuton is, and we will go over that. But but he's preferring the text type argument over the homeoteleuton argument. So I'm going to pop open my spreadsheet here. Yes, I went through. I'm going to like catalog these and have a library of them, and then I can run some analysis on them. Um, so I went through and... and uh, Looked at each one of these, copied down their centuries, like which century they're they're from. I use the um, <laughs> there's a, there's a list on the wiki site that lists every unseal manuscript and and provides uh, a date in there as well as uh, a summary of the type of text they are based on the four text type system um, that it's on its way out. Um, and then I have a column here to say whether includes Mark eleven twenty six or whether excludes. Um, I was going to say disclude. We don't use that word, but that's okay. Uh, I, I made that up a long time ago when I was doing software work. Uh, disclude. Got in trouble for that. Nah, did not trouble, but I got made fun of for that one. Anyway, so, okay. So anyway, here, what we have is basically 12 unseal manuscripts pre 9th century that include the verse and six unseal manuscripts pre 11th century. <laughs> I don't know why that's why the unseal is in there. It's funny. Um, uh, that, that exclude the verse. Okay. And I copy down all of their text types. So we have representatives um, from the Byzantine text type, some with mixture from the Western text type. Uh, we have one from the Caesarean uh, uh, text type. Um, so with the inclusion of the verse, we have a representative from every single text type. Now, with the exclusion, right, the exclusion of the verse, we have Alexandrian witnesses. Um, we have one mixed Western manuscript where it's considered to be Caesarean in the 5th century. Uh, we have an Alexandrian mixed with Byzantine uh, readings, right? Uh, mixed Ale another mixed Alexandrian Byzantine. Uh, and then a, a, Byzantine, a Byzantine commentary manuscript all the way from the 11th century that excludes the verse. Now, I made a few notes here because they're, they're rather interesting. So if I, if I break down the count, first of all, by date. Um, yeah, so if you, if you take a look at this chart, we get an idea of the counts are of unseals. Now, I didn't include the rest of the minis minuscules, but we, we have an indication. I, I said six. I thought I had six and I have seven there. Maybe one, two, three, four, five. Six. Okay, I can't count apparently. Seven. There's seven manuscripts. I think it was six because I didn't include uh, the 11th century when we talk about old manuscripts. But yeah, so if we come back over here, we have two manuscripts from the 4th century. We know what those are, right? Sinaiticus and Vaticanus. And then we have one manuscript from the 5th century. Um, I think that was uh, Washingtonianus, uh, the, the 32. That's the one with the Freer Logion and a bunch of weird readings. Um, and then we have one from the 8th century and two from the 9th century, one from the 11th century, total for seven that exclude the verse. All of the uh, Egyptian papyri that are typically 3rd century, um, they're not included because they just don't contain this passage. It's either lacanus, uh, that is, it's damaged in that area, or they just don't exist. We, we don't have it. Um, so you're basically looking at all of the 11th, 11th century I should say 10th century. I really should just leave that out. It's surprising that's in there. But really, before the 9th century, or the 9th century and before, you only got six witnesses. You can count them. You can almost count them on one hand, right? Six witnesses that exclude it. Now, if we come over to the Byzantine, or the Byzantine, <laughs> if we come over to the Byzantine reading, it really is a Byzantine reading, um, we've got 12 manuscripts. Um, we've got three from the 5th century. Uh, one of those being Alexandrinus, of course, um, Codex C, Ephraim Rescriptus, and uh, I think it was Codex D. Um, and then we have um, one 6th century, sorry, three 6th century manuscripts, 
uh, 1 8th century and 5 9th century unsealed manuscripts. Now the question is, does this, does Sinaiticus and Vaticanus justify pushing this over the edge? Because there's, there's no other way to read this data and read these facts other than Vaticanus and Sinaitic, uh, Sinaiticus pushing it over the edge. Right now, I want to come back to Metzger's charge here. Um, remember, he says, it's absence from early witnesses that represent all text types. Well, the next question is, is well, are, are all text types represented in the exclusion? So if we come back to our trusty little manuscript, or our trusty little spreadsheet, um, I did a text type breakdown. So we have seven Byzantine manuscripts that include it, two Western that include it, one Caesarian that includes it, and two mixed manuscripts. Now we'll talk about the mixed manuscripts because they're really important in this discussion. When we come to exclude it, and remember, um, Bruce Metzger saying, it's absence from early witnesses that represent all text types make it highly probable that the words were inserted by copyists. Okay, So we have three Alexandrian witnesses that exclude it and three mixed manuscripts. Now remember, he says early witnesses. Okay, What does Bruce consider early witnesses? Okay, if we consider the 11th century Byzantine manuscript as an early witness, we could put one down for the Byzantine text. But in all honesty, is an 11th century manuscript considered early? I would have to say no, especially if they're considering Sinaiticus and Vaticanus early. Certainly they are considering those two early. So I, I just, I don't think it's fair to add that into the early manuscripts. So we're left with three Alexandrian manuscripts excluding it and three mixed. So what are the details of these mixed manuscripts? What is going on here? So we're going to come back here to our spreadsheet here. And I left a few notes here. So our mixed manuscripts are Codex W. Okay, it's, it's, it's a Western manuscript. Mark is said to be Caesarean, but it's got a lot of issues with it. It's not entirely Caesarean. And Caesarean is one of those, like, <laughs> what do you call it? Uh, text types that were um, kind of debated whether or not existed long before we, st we began talking about text types as a whole being abandoned. Um, now, if it is Caesarean, it's problematic because um, Family 1 and Family 13, which are considered good representations of the Caesarean manuscript, contain this verse. Um, so we could come back and we could give it one Caesarean, but I don't even know if the Caesarean portion, and I don't think we really know if the Caesarean portion is impacting this specific portion of the manuscript. Um, again, if we come back here, we can talk about the next one, um, Codex Delta. This is that really cool manuscript, which is like a Greek Latin um, diglot. Um, but it is a mixed manuscript and it's mixed. Um, but then when you look at the articles and such, a number of people are considering Mark as an Alexandrian, uh, as that portion of that manuscript is considered to be Alexandrian. Um, so we push that into the Alexandrian portion. I guess we could add a four. Yeah, we could do four. Again, same thing. Uh, we come to another mixed manuscript, Cod Codex C. It's, it's mixed with Alexandrian and Byzantine readings. In fact, what's happening is the Byzantine portion of this manuscript specifically is said to be just barely on the fringes of being a Byz Byzantine manuscript. Um, but then uh, someone had, uh, had uh, took a look at Mark and Mark, the, the Gospel of Mark here, had apparently tipped the scales in the favor of being an Alexandrian manuscript. So we could add another manuscript here uh, for an Alexandrian witness. And so what you get here is another quintessential uh, Byzantine versus Alexandrian reading here. And this statement here from Bruce Metzger is just simply not true. It's not true. Now, I'm not going to take the position that Bruce Metzger simply lied and stuff. I think he was just working with the data that he had in front of him. Um, but objectively, the early Uncio manuscripts uh, exclusion of this verse is not represented in all four text types. It just simply is not. So now when we go back to what he said in his commentary, um, although it might be thought that the sentence was accidentally omitted because of homeoteleuton, remember, he thought that the evidence of the text types 
favors that over homeotelieton. And since we have totally debunked that, since the facts tend to show um, that he is uh, very wrong here, um, we are left with the option for homeotelieton. So what is homeotelieton? All right, so I have James Snap's article. He has an article on Mark 11:26. It's uh, super good, super thorough. J James does a thorough job on a lot of these things. So right right away, he just, <laughs> right, he ain't pulling the punches. It's home homeotelieton. It's homeotelieton. Um, but yeah, so he's arguing here that homeotelieton is, is the culprit in this scenario. Um, so if we come down to Codex um, Alexandrinus, and this is the example he uses. Yeah, so you can see here, uh, ta paraptomata hemon. Um, and what happens is a scribe will be copying all of this down, copying, 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 and then he'll copy this down. He'll look away, okay? Just, just imagine the scribe looking away at this point uh, and then coming back to the manuscript to copy it. And instead of starting here, he sees that this is exactly the same and he begins here and figures, oh, it's time to start a new line. So ta paraptomata uh, hemon is exactly the same here as ta paraptomata hemon. Um, so this is relatively common in textual criticism and it's oftentimes given significant weight when trying to decide when readings, when, when a passage should be in or out. Um, so although Mark 11.26 is not found in our two oldest Greek manuscripts of the surrounding verses, earliest evidence from Cyprian confirms the presence of the verse in North Africa in the mid 200s. Now, if we go up here, this is one thing I didn't touch on is um, Cyprian is uh, quoted in two, uh, 249, uh, sometime between 249 and two, 258, as quoting this verse. Um, let, let me just read this section here. Um, so in addition, although Vaticanus and Sinaiticus are old, they are not as old as the manuscripts that were used by Cyprian. So Cyprian's using a manuscript from uh, the early 3rd century that contains the passage in question. Cyprian served as Bishop of Carth Carthage, North Africa, from 249 to 258. Um, lots of stuff going on in, in uh, North Africa. I, I did a little discussion on Mark 16, 9 through 20 and the, the geographic argument um, where we start to see issues popping up in North Africa. Another one was the Mark of the Beast, 666 versus 616. And 616, I, I believe, was uh, propagated through the Donatists in North Africa. And we know that because of, um, I forget whose commentary it was uh, that circulated the reading. Uh, anyway, so 258, during the persecution that happened during the reign of Valerian, um, thus his manuscript of Mark were at least 75 years older than Vaticanus and at least 100 years older than Sinaiticus, using the generally accepted production dates of 325 and 350. Uh, so in Cyprian's treaties, uh, uh, 12th uh, book 3 in chapter 22, Cyprian briefly undertakes the task of demonstrating from the scriptures that when Christians are wronged, we must pardon and forgive. He gets right to the point. Um, so in the Gospels, in the daily prayer, forgive us our debts, even as we forgive our debtors also according to Mark. And when you stand for prayer, forgive. If you have aught against anyone, that also your Father who is in heaven may forgive you your sins. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your sins. Also in the same place, in what measure you meet in, in that shall it be measured to you again. Um, so we, we have what appears to be a direct, uh, a direct quote of Cyprian in 250, right? And he's clearly reading a manuscript that's just as old, uh, or probably just as old, probably older, likely older than he is. I don't know that, that hard, hard to tell, <laughs> but anyway, so in, in 250, we have a reference to a quote to this specific passage in, in Mark. Uh, so we have versional support is, um, is taken here. Uh, he talks a little bit about the versions. Again, I, I didn't find much on the versions um, aside from split versional support in the Sahedic and the Bohiric. Um, the Latin tradition uh, tends to be split as well, but I, I believe it favors the inclusion. Um, and then the Gothic uh, translation contains it, um, so which goes back to the 300s in Wolfila. And uh, what else am I missing? The Syriac is split down the middle. The Syriac is often split uh, with some of these. So, for example, even the, the Longania Mark uh, is, is split. Other witnesses attest the 4th century text also weighed in with support for the inclusion of Mark 11.26. Codex Argentius, made in the 500, is the main witness of the Gothic version. We were just talking about that. Um, about the time of Codex Sinaiticus was made. 
uh, uh, Codex Argentinus includes the verse, the Peshitta, um, probably made in the late 300, includes the verse, the Latin Vulgate, made in 383 by Jerome, who stated that he consulted ancient Greek manuscripts to ensure that the text was well-grounded, includes the verse. Almost all old Latin manuscripts, the descendants of Latin manuscripts made before the Vulgate, dominated the Latin copying tradition, including um, the verse as well. Uh, and then Vatican, Sinaiticus, and Cyprian. All right, yeah, so... Long story short, Mark 11.26, I think, should be retained. If we take a look at all of the, <laughs> the Greek witnesses anyway, we can see that its breakdown of text types just doesn't work. Now, now Heaven in the comments, he's talking about uh, text types amongst um, versional details. Now, uh, versional, in, versional ancient versions. There we go, ancient versions. And, and a quick breakdown from James Snap seems to imply that equally old manuscripts contain it. Uh, so, uh, again, if we use Greek as our measuring rod, uh, the, the Greek manuscript tradition, I, I don't see any other way other than to suggest that these ought to be included. And again, I think it comes down, right? I know, I know this, this, my interpretation, this is what I think, this is, this, you, you can, uh, you can, you can quote me on it, but, uh, you're, you're quoting what I'm thinking here is that if you come back to our count breakdown, the two manuscripts being Codex Vaticanus and Sinaiticus, if you remove those, right, uh, almost guaranteed, almost guaranteed, um, that the critical text would contain this verse. And so what that suggests, to me at least, is that a tremendous amount of weight is still given to Codex Vaticanus and Codex Sinaiticus. Um, now, again, I don't know why uh, there is so much weight. I, I know most people would say, well, it's, there's so much weight on them because they're early. Uh, but there's got to be a little bit more to that. So, um, I have invited um, Dr. Peter Gurry to come on and talk about Codex Vaticanus and Sinaiticus, um, along with Dr. Robinson, uh, to come and talk about text types as well. Um, so we're not done with the text type discussion. And so hopefully we're, we're going to record maybe next week and get some of the editing done and then the following week have that uh, out for you to see. So the main, the main focus of that discussion is going to be text types, but I do want to find out about Vaticanus and Sinaiticus and determine, you know, what makes this manuscript more important? What are we missing? Because clearly it can't be, it can't be just age, right? It's got to be a little bit more than just age. Uh, so we're, we're going to take a look at that. But anyway, yeah, so this, this passage, heavily weighted, Vaticanus and Sinaiticus is my own interpretation. Um, that's why it's excluded from our modern English Bible translations. But when you really look closely at the evidence... I think it's one that ought to be kept. It's it's in the Byzantine tradition. There's no question about it. 96% of our manuscripts contain it. So that's that's that. <music>